Since its introduction in 2016, the SpaceX Starship has been seen as a joke by billionaire Elon Musk. More than half of those who know it say it's only a money-burning project and Starship will never fly. However, this is how SpaceX responded to them. This is also the reason Musk is always confident. I don't do this to criticize anyone. This just proves that SpaceX's Starship has created something extraordinary. And honestly, their skepticism was perfectly natural. Starship possesses concepts that had not ever existed before in the rocket industry. One aspect of Starship that drew skepticism was the unconventional choice of stainless steel as the primary construction material. Critics argued that stainless steel was relatively heavy compared to carbon composites commonly used in aerospace applications. Concerns were raised about the impact on weight efficiency and overall performance. In fact, when deciding what to construct the body of a rocket out of, many materials are quickly eliminated. Whatever material you end up going with has to have many desirable properties. It has to be strong enough to support the weight of the rocket payload, propellant, and body, while also being light enough to not be a significant weight contribution. It has to be able to handle the massive temperature swings of storing incredibly cold cryogenic fuel while maintaining integrity during the extremely high temperatures experienced during re-entry. You also want your material to be as cheap as possible. The majority of rockets use either aluminum or titanium for their main body, with other parts being made out of carbon composites. Starships being made out of steel, specifically a combination of 301 and 304L stainless steel. Titanium and aluminum, both being light and strong metals, tend to fail between 300 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit, while steel can get up to 15 to 1600 Fahrenheit. Steel also tends to become stronger when dealing with low cryogenic temperatures, something the other two don't. Carbon composites may be promising in the future as they're very lightweight yet strong materials. Unfortunately, they're expensive when compared to steel. According to a statement from Elon in 2019, SpaceX was spending close to $200 a kilogram of carbon fiber compared to $3 per kilogram they paid for steel. This switch to steel has allowed SpaceX to prototype and iterate at a rapid pace that they wouldn't have been able to do if they were still using carbon composites. Next, it's Raptor. The rocket engine that'll loft Starship into orbit is SpaceX's Raptor engine. A feat of engineering on its own, the Raptor previously set a rocketry record by achieving the highest combustion chamber pressure ever of 350 bar, which produces over half a million pounds of force. The Raptor is also the only engine in existence to use the full-flow staged combustion cycle for power, a historically hard process to implement. A full-flow staged combustion cycle refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what's called a pre-burner to get this process going by injecting a small amount of fuel. Normally, some of the propellant is expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellant available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Raptor burns fuel at a high enough pressure that can steer the fire from the pre-burner back into the combustion chamber and completely burn that propellant with the rest of the propellants, says space consultant Charlie Garcia from MIT. And it does this in a very clever way that only the Russians have done previously, by putting all the propellant in the engine through the pre-burners. The end result is that Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, about three times greater, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin despite its similar size. In 2016, Musk referred to the insane pressure inside the main chamber of the engine, 300 bars, which required the development of a new metal alloy. The other is the use of methane. No methane-powered rocket has ever made it to orbit, with Starhopper's test hop the other day being the first time a methane-powered rocket engine had actually taken flight. Methane prevents a buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower costs. Historically, the two rocket fuels of choice are kerosene, also known as RP-1, and hydrogen. For example, the Saturn V used kerosene, and the space shuttle used hydrogen. Without going too far into the details, the main reason for these choices over other fuels come down to energy and storage. Hydrogen, when burned with oxygen, releases a lot of energy. In fact, it's nearly impossible to find a more energetic fuel suitable for high-velocity rocket exhaust than hydrogen. So why not use hydrogen? Well, it's not easy to store. Hydrogen, with its high vapor pressure, tends to boil quickly. 
This becomes a problem when your liquid hydrogen tank warms up inside the rocket while it's sitting on the launch pad waiting to go. It's also unsuitable for long-term storage due to hydrogen's tendency to cause hydrogen embrittlement in metal storage tanks like the ones being used on Starship, reducing the strength of the metal over time. On the other side of things is kerosene. The type used in rockets is a highly refined grade of kerosene called RP-1. Very popular in launch vehicles, especially for the main booster stage, kerosene has none of the storage problems hydrogen has. RP-1 can happily sit in a liquid state on the launch pad for hours and not cause any problems. So why not use kerosene? While not quite as energetic as hydrogen, the real issue when using kerosene is the coking problem. When kerosene is burned, it releases unwanted byproducts, mainly soot. The soot tends to clog engines over time, making reuse of engine components without refurbishment a nightmare. The Raptors specifically are aiming to be as reusable as possible. So that leaves methane, which seems like the rocket fuel choice of the future. Liquid methane sits in the middle of other rocket fuels. Not as energetic as hydrogen, it can be stored long-term in metal containers. It's not as easy to handle as kerosene, but it's more energetic without having the coking problem. As an added bonus, methane can be made on the surface of Mars relatively easy, which kerosene can't. This makes methane the ideal choice for a rocket vehicle designed to launch to and from the red planet. Finally, an insane concept is the ability to refuel in space. Science fiction author Robert Heinlein once said in an interview, if you can get your ship into orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. It turns out that roughly half of all the energy expended traveling to anywhere in the solar system, be it the moon, Mars, or even the outer planets, is spent just getting into the orbit of Earth. The problem is that for every kilogram of payload you have, you also have to have the fuel to lift into orbit but then that fuel also needs additional fuel to lift the first amount. Eventually, the math works out to be that you need an absurdly large rocket to go anywhere at all. The exception of this is if you're already able to refuel your rocket while it's in orbit already. This is the plan for Starship, in-orbit refueling. It's a step so critical to leaving our planet behind that NASA has announced that they'll work with SpaceX to tackle the problem. The SpaceX plan is to send up a single Starship into orbit first, then, additional tanker starships will be sent up in sequence afterward. These tankers will rendezvous with the first starship and transfer their excess fuel into it. This way, Starship will double its capacity to visit other destinations in the solar system. In-orbit refueling won't be easy. The task of automatic docking has been demonstrated to be within SpaceX's capability with the Dragon demo missions to the International Space Station. But transferring large amounts of propellant between two spacecrafts of this size has never been done before. In space, liquids tend to spread out within their containers. Pulling off the maneuver will take a great deal of coordination between the two starships. In short, the journey of SpaceX's Starship project has been characterized by skepticism, doubts, and challenges. The road to success is definitely still far. However, through a relentless pursuit of innovation, the first Starship orbital flight has defied the initial doubters and silenced the skeptics. The ability to confront doubts head-on and overcome technical challenges is a testament to SpaceX's ingenuity, resilience, and commitment to pushing the boundaries of human achievement. As Starship continues to evolve and reach new milestones, it paves the way for a future where space travel and colonization become routine, leaving behind a legacy of daring to dream big and proving the skeptics wrong. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.